may I ask you with a simple question? How many languages are there in this world? Yes? 7,000 plus. 7, plus. Yeah? Anybody else? How many life languages are there in this world? 7,000. Again, 7,000. That means out of the 7,000 languages, all are life languages. How many dead languages are there in this world? Can you explain? 2,000. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? How many people are there in this world? 7 million. 7? 7 million? 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 So among these two, approximately 200 countries, we have got the information that there are approximately 7,000 languages, as we have said. But according to the information, there are approximately 5,000 more languages that there in this world. And out of them, 1,500 languages are dead. Dead language means the last speaking fraction of this language is dead. That's right. And for this reason, it is called dead language. So we can say that there are 3,500 living languages in this world. A person who knows one language. He or she is called monolingual person. A person who knows more than one language, one language, he is called bilingual. Bilingual person. More than two languages, multilingual person. Nowadays, people are not in this time that they will be monolingual or bilingual they will be multilingual because you are phoning somewhere else and you are writing that means nowadays monolingual genius person or monolingual mono genius will not be appreciated because this is an age of technology and time and this is an age of science it is an age of, of actual media so you are calling and at the same time you are writing. That means you have been multi -tenious. That means among the old geniuses, only a little bit time put life using his both hands. Isn't it? He is multi -tenious. Did you try to write with your two hands together? Yeah, I tried. Sometimes, like how it is possible to write that? <laughs> Actually, the brain will be focusing with the one thing. So when you will be doing this, like you will be trying to write using your two hands, that will be faster in your brain. So we don't have that capacity to make two kind of uses at the time of writing with our two hands. Okay, but everybody, human mind and psychology is to reach the dungeon Ganga. Yeah, who are there from Panjigar? Is there Panjigar or Lalmoni? If you go over there, you will see the top tip of the Himalayan mountain that is called Kanchenjunga. So the human mentality and the psychology is that always try to reach to the apex of something. In that age, many questions nowadays try to be multilingual. Why? Because in European Commission of Education, European Council of Education, they say that all European countries, every student has to learn one language except his or her master. Why? Because language learning is not a fashion nowadays. Because we are not in isolated classes. 
we are connected to the other parts of this world virtually and also with the whatsapp call with the uh, other social media call and if you might not be like that but you might get fall sick your parents might got get fall sick so then you have to have the medical treatment over here and then you have to go over here suppose that shouldn't be if you, if you may have some business you have become a business entrepreneur and for this reason you have to visit every day so you can say oh every day i take my breakfast at singapore hotel meridian okay. in singapore they use the spanish language or singaporean or english language but if you do over there in china then what you will be do you have to know languages so the motive is that now we are in an age that everybody requires to be multilingual and this course will hint you in the way of becoming a multilingual person if you want to be okay so the first thing is first yeah so you see here that english language teaching has been a subject in academic institution in 20th century but we have seen that is we have got the information not seen that there are 3500 languages but in the 20th century we have got english language at the second language in many academic institutions all over the world as you are in this department the name of this department is department of so how does this situation create we will try to have a look in this very initial classes okay so and how english language teaching became a subject to study all over the world in my initial lectures you have understood that why many people nowadays try to become a multilingual person actually in elt pt they have said that english language was not in a position like that okay actually english language teaching approaches and methods has been changed gradually from the initial stage from the 16th century 17th century 18th century and 19th century and then 20th century or 21st century okay gradually there was a development of english language teaching i can uh, which professions it does the learner need oral proficiency or reading pro comprehension in case of understanding the history of english language teaching we have to understand that what we need whether we need oral proficiency or reading proficiency or writing proficiency which one is must needed and uh, critics have also mentioned to change in theories and if it is the situation okay you can say that yes writing english is necessary to me or reading capabilities is necessary to me or you can say oh i want to increase or enhance my speaking capabilities you can do so but critics have got these changes and got the changes of the requirements of the language learner especially the foreign language learners and gradually their process and, and methods have been have been changed okay here one critic is name is kelly in 1967 and howard in 1984 mentioned that many current methods of language teaching are following the previous methods so we can say that modern language teaching methods and pedagogies are not new actually they have derived their initiatives and principles from the older methods that means in a gradual way approaches and methods in english language teaching has have been changed okay and such kind of controversies hover in the history of foreign language teaching 
Okay, that means which approach is appropriate and which approach has come in the existence of modern foreign language teaching in which way. At present, approximately 202 countries are there in this world and roughly 8 billion people live here and among them they use 3,500 languages. And especially for the international communication among these 212 countries, now it is necessary to learn foreign language because it is not possible for a person to learn 3,500 languages. Can it be possible? You can try. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, it cannot be possible. But if you gain the ability to at least learn five languages, you can work as a bilingual person. That means the actually many person visit over in Bangladesh, they are foreigners. So how they will pick you as a uh, bilingual person or multilingual person if you know at least five languages. So that is the different concern. But concern is that among the 212 countries, communication is needed for various reasons. It needs no theory. Various reasons. These reasons might be different to us. But there are some reasons. So communication is important at this time. And for this reason, it has become crucial to learn another language, except your mother language. This idea also initiated by this person. Most probably you know him. Christopher Columbus, yeah, and Columbus discovered America in 1492, okay, so this Italian navigator, before the discovery of America, there was a continent called America, it was out of human imagination, okay, so this person, the Italian navigator, Columbus, discovered America and there is a new waterways that can connect Europe to, to the horizon of the world increased lot after the discovery of this great navigator, Stuart Columbus. Another one is Vasco da Gama. After some years, that means 1492 and 1498. In 1498, this man, Portuguese navigator, he invented the waterways to reach from Asia to India. Okay, so another waterway, waterways that was invented. So uh, before that, there was no such thing as the people from Europe who got found in uh, Asian continent. This man, actually, by accident, but not but they are the people. They are the, they study math and everything else. Okay, over the course of these two boys beginning in 1497 and 1502, uh, that means this man, Vasco da Gama, discovered the waterways. So these are the incidents that happened in 15th century. Before that, the communication process was not necessary. We do not communicate. Okay, nowadays we are trying to go to the moon to purchase a land over there because if you want to, it's there over there, isn't it? But before the discovery of moon, before the landing of moon, the landing of person to the moon, we didn't have that. Okay, but and for, in the same way, after the discovery of America and Indian waterways, many people started to go in these countries and they had a necessity to go over there. Their necessity is multiple. Multifarious. Okay, another man. Actually, not man. They are two brothers. Brother. They are the right brothers. Months later, that means in 1903, 1903, they have invented airplane. So before that, from 15th century, 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, all these 400 years, people who communicate with several parts of this world through this waterways, okay, and after the invention of aeroplane in 1906, that's necessary to become many more, okay, I can pick, actually, if you want to go to Europe by the waterways, how many days they will take, Columbus took three months, 
from uh, this starting time to reach the American side. But from Asian continent, if you want to go to Europe, approximately two months or three months it will take to reach over there. But if you on boat, on an aeroplane, then for 15 days. If you want to go to America, then it's 24 hours flight. And if you want to go to UK, then it will be 12 hours flight. Okay, so that is the communication has been easy. And when the communication has been easy, people tended to go everywhere, various regions. That means the countries, the many people who are the stiff hearing persons, they have the intense intention to rule over the other parts of this world. So many ways. So business, tourism, education, emigration, many things. The people started to move over here and over here and there. Okay. So that is the discovery of all birds. Again, some incidents happened in the history of the civilization. Among them appeared with Muhammad Victor Taji. Okay, and also the Crusades, the Ottoman Empire and the Alexander the Great, they, these are the person, actually they have intention to explore the unexplored parts of this world. The reason? They know. I don't know. Actually, they wanted to explore the unexplored parts of this world. Okay, they wanted to explore the unexplored parts of this world. And for this reason, people from one language spread it towards the different parts of this world. And then, a Communication is easy, and the communication on this effective communication that can done only by language. And then on the necessity of English language teaching became a must, or a foreign language teaching became a must. At present, 60% of the world population are multilingual. Okay. And for some of the contemporary and historical perspectives, bilingualism and multilingualism have become a practical concern rather than a fashion. Once upon a time, we would say, oh, I know English because I am a smart person. But now it is not. You have to learn a foreign language. It may be English, French, German, for your necessity. If one of your relatives lives in Kentucky, in Buffalo City of USA. Don't go over there because that city is under 10 feet snow. Yeah? That's the kidding. Okay, no problem. But now it is the situation. It is your necessity nowadays to learn foreign languages. I would not say English language because foreign language. It is varied. Okay, but the ratio said that at present 60% people are multilingual they know more than one two languages okay so because it is their practical concern nowadays it is not the fashion nowadays okay so english the world most widely studied language at present okay what will happen we don't know after 50 years because language of a country will be dominating for two reasons power Two kinds of power, military power and economic power. English, after the First World War, they had military power and economic power. And after the First World War, many countries of the world started opening the department, department of English like here. Yeah? In this department, from 1886, English language is teaching. English department is there. Okay. That university started in 1921. Okay. So after the first world war, English became the language of the most powerful country. Powerful in which sense? Powerful military power and also the economic power. But the situation was not like that like 600 years ago. If we go back to the 15th century, the situation was like that. That is, no, people who don't learn language. And people at that time, English was not the language of a powerful nation. English was not the nation, language of a powerful nation based on economy and military power. So what was the situation? At the time, Latin language 
and play in Porsche because we have got the name Alexander the Great. Okay, and especially from the Indian civilization, Roman civilization is spread all over the maximum parts of this world is covered by the Roman civilization. Okay, they have the great warriors. They invented many situations, and for this reason, at that time, Roman became the language of powerful nations. So people were intended to learn not English language; they wanted to learn Latin language. Okay, so. In Western countries or in European countries, people studied not English, not French, not German. They studied Latin. And for this reason, Latin and Greek languages as are called classical languages. Okay, it has another reason because in the 16th century, the for the political changes in Europe, that means Latin lose lost their economic and political power in 16th century. And at the time, people were moving away from Latin to some other language, especially at the time European other countries became powerful. France, Italy, Germany, and England. They were trying to gain wealth and they are trying to gain power in terms of economy and in terms of military power. And for this reason, Latin lost its foundation that Latin no more was the language of the powerful nation. Now the power disseminated to France, Germany, Italy, England. And the Latin became the optional subject in 16th century. Where? In Spain, European countries. Now, Latin no more than principal subject. Okay, we have English major subject from class 6 to 12. Okay. But in Western countries, Latin was the major subject up to 16th century. From 16th century onwards, Latin didn't, was not the major subject. It became the, why? <coughs> because Latin civilization, Roman civilization and Latin language lost their dominance, that is the power, economic power as well as the... So what will be happening to the Latin language then? Actually, the Latin civilization, Roman civilization have got some scholars and we have seen. What is his name? Bhargil. Actually, in uh, a Roman name, it is called Bhargil, but English name is Bhargil. Virgil is a Roman poet and actually he contributed much to the poetry and the literature not only in Roman civilization but the civilization to Europe and the other parts of this world. They have another poet, Ovid, yeah, and Roman poet, okay, so he is also an influential person, actually he is a Roman poet and he is uh, quite similar to the other important personality, literary personality of the time, the Greek civilization, Roman civilization. Okay. And they have got another academician, Cicero. Okay. They can, the Western people, especially the European people, they can leave Latin language, but they can't leave the literature written by these three personalities like Virgil, Ovid, and so what will be then? Then, at that time, in 16th century and the 17th century, the English or the Latin study became the classical style. Okay. So Latin language was the language through which we can study the literature of Virgil, Ovid, and Cicero. Okay. So in order to study the literature written by these three personalities, we have to know Latin. And for this reason, Latin was an optional language in European countries at the time, in 17, 16, and 18 century. Okay, and what is needed to study a Latin language? Grammar is important. Okay, and grammar is important in which way? That means in European countries, uh, many 
many of you, okay, many of you heard the name of William Shakespeare, isn't it? Yeah. William Shakespeare went to a school and he started put on Avon, okay. And in that school, what type of school was there? Grammar school, okay. Grammar school. Okay, so in 15th, 16th, 17th century, to study Latin, grammar school established in European countries to study Latin. They would be introducing actually the grammatical rules, basic grammatical rules, advanced grammar, and rhetoric were introduced at the time in this grammar school. So language study in 16th, 17th, 18th century was that they will be studying the grammatical roles and other rhetorics to learn our language. That was the approach of English language teaching or foreign language teaching at the time in 17, 18 and also in the 19th century. And also it is uh, rigorous, especially okay. There is a there is a drama written by Kumar I have seen it. One student uh, mispronounced or misspelled a what? Bull of a baran for it like I school it after. It doesn't have a look at it to be brought for a gun to be brought for. Cannot find many of you, especially many of us, when we have been studying in. The school, if we make mistakes in pronouncing or spelling our English word, we will get brutal punishment. And that situation created from the reading studies in European countries. Especially, grammar should be accurate. And advanced studies of grammar should be accurate. And for this reason, reading study has been treated as that we have to learn it accurately. So, the experience of teaching and learning language, especially the learning language, were the fearful experience for the students who had been studying language in 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th century through the grammatical rules. Okay. And next time, in 16th century, uh, Roger X. S. Chajam, S. Chajam, and Montenegro in the 16th century and Comenius and John Locke in the 17th century proposed to reform the foreign language teaching and learning curriculum. Observing this scenario, okay. Actually nowadays, if a teacher rebukes our uh, students, the parents will go over their own why we have the always order situation of rebuke my son. But previously it was not the situation. They would rebuke and they would beat the students, okay. And after observing this, many in English at that time to reform such kind of methods and approaches in English language teaching, they started to tell reform the way. Reform which way? That means Latin, in which way Latin had been studied in schools and colleges. And Latin and Greek had been identified as the classical and the ideal form of language, and so their proposals were not reflected in the then curriculum. So they proposed, but they were failed. They wanted to reform it, but they failed. And gradually, the study of Latin was declined, and the study of Latin grammar became an end in itself. So many reformers tried to change the form, but they failed. And for this reason, the study of Latin prolonged up to the 16th, 17th, 18th, and even 19th century. But modern language, what we say nowadays, that means what are called modern languages. What is the definition of modern languages? That means the languages who are, which are dead now, we can't call them modern languages. Modern languages, that means at the present time, what languages are used by the modern person? That means what is necessary. Okay. As especially modern person, who is the modern person? Who will have the time in his place? Okay. You can call me a modern person because I am not the time if I do not have class. Time in space. If my space has the time between space, then I can be called a modern person. And for this language, when a language will have it necessary for the time in memorial, that means that is called the upward. When which are the modern languages? So five, six, seven, and what are the languages used in UN? Five languages, official languages are there in United Nations. Okay. 
and other Thai languages they can be used in the success of 500 or uh, 1500 or 100 years. These languages are called modern languages. So when modern languages started entering in the university curriculum, then they thought, no, we can't stick to the Latin language teaching approach. We have to move forward. And actually, Latin language list of vocabulary grammar was important. So they said, nowadays, the modern language linguists, they said that no, at present, Latin language teaching approach will be utilized for writing and reading and also translation only. So in case of the modern persons, they are in need of oral proficiency because we have got the information that waterways, aeroplane, everything has been in, have been invented and discovered. And for this reason, oral proficiency and the communication is much needed now, eh? Yes. So they can allude that. So this is their oral proficiency in the foreign language. Students are allowed and encouraged to read allowed and translation. These ways of teaching foreign language convey no positive result. Okay. And the translation, grammatical rules, okay, he or she can write good English, but if she or he can't speak English. Actually, this is for the methods and approach used by the linguists and the teachers and the languages classes at the time. Because this is for the approach and methods they followed. They followed that they have to know the grammatical rules. So no, they know it. They know the uh, vocabulary. They know it. They know how to translate. They know it. But they can't speak. Modern persons, they, for, for, uh, they felt it necessary that now oral proficiency and the communication is very needed and crucially needed. And by the 19th century, Okay, so by the 19th century, foreign language teaching was modeled on the process of Latin language teaching. So in the 19th century, English language teaching was modeled on, that is, the way Latin language was taught. So what were the procedure? Procedure was that grammar points, vocabulary, and translation, simply and simple sentence. Throughout the 19th century, foreign language teaching is included into the morphology and sentence. Rules of grammar and to memorize. Memorize, you have to memorize. At present, we are following communicative English language teaching. Communicative English language teaching says that no, you, ha you don't have to be accurate. Just you have to be able to communicate with others. But grammar translation approach or the lyric approach of teaching that was you have to be accurate. You have to be accurate. So, and speaking was there, but speaking was the minimum in grammar translation or the Latin approach of teaching. Two parts of grammar book at the time. First part described grammar rules and the second part was considered to the translation from French to German, German to French, French to German, German to French and French to English, like that. So at that time, up to the 19th century, that happened. And that were the tropical examples of sentence that was used in that time. Thou has a book, the horse is beautiful, he has a kind dog. That means no rhetoric were there. Simply they would translate. That means if you put a sentence in Google, and if you translate it, okay, the Google don't understand the rhetoric. And for this reason, you will get a peculiar kind of Bengali translation if you put in Google Translate. <laughs> because they will translate it literally. So that was the situation of teaching Latin language at that time. The approach for teaching foreign language teaching became known as the grammar translation method. So up to the 19th century, the way language, Latin language was taught that method is called Grammar, translation, method. Because grammar is the main component of what they are, and next time, what do they do? They do translation. From French to Germany, Germany to France, and Germany to English, English to Okay, so that is called grammar translation method. Okay, so grammar translation method, what is that? It is a method that grammar is the main option of study, grammatical rules and other things. 
Okay, now it's not necessary to write, I will be sending you the slide to your email address. So in America, GTM is known as the Prussian method. Okay, and the techniques that is foreign language teaching, expli explicit instruction in the grammatical analysis in GTM. And the target language and the translation of sentences from the native language into the target language, target language to the native language. That is the basic components or the basic principles of grammar translation method. And why this it is called grammar translation method? Grammar translation method is a method of teaching foreign language derived from the classical method of Greek, teaching Greek and Latin. GTM, that means grammar translation method, is also called classical method. So it has three names. Grammar translation method, in America it is called Prussian method, and next time it is called classical method. Why classical method? What we have said, that means in case of study the Latin classical literature, Roman classical literature, this language is used. And the way, that means grammar translation method, it started its journey from 16, 17, 18, and 19 centuries. So for the long time, this was a very dominant method of English language teaching. Why it was so? That I have told it earlier. Because we have no option at the time. And we have also given so much necessity to learn modern language in other ways or in other apps. Okay. So that was the grammar translation method. Main features of grammar translation methods focuses on reading and writing, uses vocabulary words, uses the sentence as the basic unit of teaching, adopt deductive approach. You may ask what it is. New terms of, are explained in the native language and emphasize this accuracy. That is the principle of grammar translation methods. Deductive method is that getting following one examples you will be applying to teach other ways that means we know the grammar translation method and following this method we wanted to learn other foreign language it is called deductive approach okay so in the 19th century gtm can move forward that means at present they need the communication. Then they want communication. Initially books, so when gamma translation method, the Latin uh, language teaching method lost its appeal in the second half or the first half of mid 19th century. Okay. And what would be doing at then? Then the people, they have no method at the time. So the people started to work on conversation, dialogues, so that they can be efficient in communications. And gradually, linguists gradually claim the foreign language teaching in secondary schools. Okay. So they thought that public education system should be changed because it can't fulfill the way we want. We want communication, but they are making efficient person for reading and writing. We don't want those. Okay. So that is what that is GTM, Gamma Translation Method, naturally lost its appeal towards the European countries. And in Germany, England, France and other parts of the world, new approaches of foreign language teaching started to enter to the curriculum. But in which way? Among them, several scholars are there, that is Marshall, Pendergast and Gwyn. They come forward to propose new approach and methods. Okay, the Frenchman Marcel referred child language learning. He said that, yeah, we can learn communication the way children learn the communication. So he proposed that, but he was failed. He proposed to study reading before other skill of a foreign language. Another man, the Englishman, Pender Jest, he proposed to object children contextual ways. In which way a child learns a language? So Pender just says that yes, we have to observe the child's learning process, context, in which context a child learns a language. So if we observe that, we can be successful in disseminating proper education to the secondary schools. Another man, he is especially F. Green. And he said, Frenchman proposed that foreign language teaching proposed based on his observations of child language learning. 
he believed that language learning should be related to an action or activity actually simply memorizing shouldn't work for language learning so Gwen said that we should work according to the sentence if we can work then our brain will strong and our brain will catch very quickly to the language so F main focus of kind of techniques and it was a popular one he established a school and he started following this method that means language learning should be learned through the activities or actions who said that is the frenchman f point said and the, what was his technique he said actually the student will do so i work towards the door the student will not tell the things the student will I work. Whenever teacher will say I work, then the student will. When the teacher will say I draw near to the door, I mean door jar kaise jaachi? Takun ki the student will draw. Near. And also they will say I draw near. I get to the door. I get to the door. Okay. I stretch my arm. Okay. They will show. They will. They will. Listen and they will act. Okay. And I take hold of the hand. So it means he will or she will take hold the hand. They will not be telling that. Okay. And I turn the hand. I open the door. Okay. These are the way the action. So that was proposed by. So that means living GTM, grammar translation method, a new approach was coming. So many linguists offered many things. So if when proposed that and this method next time became the total physical response and also situational language teaching but in the mid 19th century F. Gwyn proposed that so we have got other two approaches that is situational English language teaching or total physical response so you will response language through your physical activities and the reform movement here now again marcel uh, penders and going proposed an alternative approach in language teaching but their ideas failed to receive supports and attention they were trying to do many things but and next time a, a practical minded linguist handy sweet handy sweet in england wilhelm victor in germany and paul passy in france offered the more credible and acceptable way. So, uh, Pendersen, F. Gwyn, they tried, but their proposal was not successful. Next time, this man, Henry Sweet and the Wilhelm and Paul Percy, they have come with more credible and effective ways of English language teaching or foreign language teaching in education. Okay, they emphasize that rather than writing abilities, speaking abilities are crucial. So, with their initiative, the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, was established, association was established in 1886. And IPA, that is the phonetic trans transcript, the phonetic symbol, that was offered by this institution, International Phonetic Association. So, they proposed a, an alphabet. And that is you study in the course phonetics and phonology. There are 44 symbols in the phonetic alphabet. <coughs> and that 44 symbol was it started its journey in 1886 by the institution that is called with the suggestion that is we have to be practical that means we have to learn the sound of a specific language so if you want to study the sound of a language of course we have to know the phonetics and phonology okay so it advocated what did the international phonetic association say the study of the spoken language phonetic training in order to establish good pronunciation uh, habits the use of conversation text and dialogues to introduce conversation phrases and idioms an inductive approach to the teaching of grammar okay so grammar should have less importance 
not much importance. And for this reason, CLT says that you have to be proficient in speaking. Don't try to bother for your grammar and the mistakes. And the teaching new meanings through establishing association within the target language rather than establishing association with the native language. Okay, so that is initiated by International Phonetic Association. Okay, and then finally, Gwyn. Gwyn also came up with the observation that is okay. Now we are in a position that we have got IPA, we have got other approach, situational approach, actual child activities. Okay, so Gwyn said that okay, we shouldn't use first language in case of learning the second language. In case of GTM, many teachers or many of the language instructor they use Bangla language. They have their point. What is their point? They say that actually understanding, that means the cognition will happen more effectively if we listen a word in my mother language. Matri bhashai kuno jini shunle amar bojhata bhala hoi. E jonno in GTM they offered first language. But many linguists say that the first language is a hindrance of learning for a language. And for this reason, if Gwyn said, no, first language will be used in terms of learning second language. And this method is called direct method. Okay, so another way, another man, he also proposed an El Sovio. In, uh, he proposed, that means, we should learn language in the following way. What a child learns its first language? That means we should learn language naturally. So that is again another method that is the natural approach of English language or foreign language teaching. Okay. So in such a way, several methods and approach came into existence and that started a journey from the very initial stage and they go up to this position. Okay, so study of approaches and methods provide teachers with a view how the field of language teaching are evolved. So in this previous story, we have seen that through the uh, 14th century towards the 20th century, the second half of the 19th century, we have got the scenario in which way English language teaching evolved in this position. Once upon a time, we, we are in a position that we had been studying Latin language and that is also the necessary for understanding the classical literature but next time towards the first half of the 19th century our necessity got diversified and for this reason communication was necessary and for this reason many linguists offered many uh, proposals for approaches and methods many of them were unsuccessful and many of them were successful and they initiated some other modern english language teaching approaches and methods like total physical response, community teaching, and direct method, and also natural approaches. These are the brief history of English language teaching. From the next class, we will also be dealing with the things that is GTM, CLT, situational approach, total physical response in more detail. Okay, so there will be 10 minutes break. Yes?